Hey everybody, welcome to PTW Amps in Quebec, Canada. On the bench today is a glorious 1974 Fender Twin Reverb, Silver Face Amp. Um, if I sound excited about this amp, it's because really one of my favorite um, um, things that I do in my, in my shop here is to take an amp that has been either not serviced or sort of disserviced over the years um, and bring it back to life and, and I hope what you heard at the beginning is that this amp is sounding nice and clean really the twin is the king of loud clean tones uh, these days they have a little bit of a checkered reputation just because they are so large you know they're pretty heavy amps they're really loud probably not the best amp for your sort of little small pub gig uh, Princeton's and Deluxe's, of course, you know, from, from a similar era are, are a little bit more popular for, for that application, but uh, there's something really special about a twin when you plug into one with a Telecaster or, in this case, a Stratocaster, uh, and just hear the, 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 the nice clean tones, the glorious tremolo, and, and the really rich spring reverb that these amplifiers have. So this came into the shop with a whole laundry list of problems and I'm not even really gonna have time to go through uh, every uh, particular thing that I found wrong with this amp. I'm gonna cover a few of the main things. When I first turned it on, before getting to work on it, it had a really horrible 120 hertz hum, um, which uh, was caused by a couple of things. First of all, the power supply filter capacitors that are located um, under a cover underneath the chassis, the so-called doghouse, there's five uh, electrolytic capacitors there that were original 1974. They had never been changed. Um, I have actually one of them here that I pulled out. This was supposed to be a 100 microfarad at 300 uh, volts DC capacitor. I don't know if you can see the numbering on there, but anyway. Um, at the end of the capacitor there are the sure physical signs of leakage, these bumps that form on the, on, on the capacitor. Uh, I tested them all, they were all pretty far off spec. So that was one of the really major problems to begin with. I've replaced those capacitors and I snapped a photo just before I put the cover back on. Uh, so there is a new set of F and T, uh, decent quality power supply capacitors in the amplifier. So that was the first problem fixed. Second problem, um, somebody had, and I, this is just one of those like little mysterious things, I don't know why these things occur, but somebody had gone into this amplifier and removed the artificial center tap for the heater filament. So just to explain what I'm talking about, the power transformer has the original power transformer dated 1974 on the date code. Um, and the power transformers in, in, in this era, at least this era of twins, does not have a center tap for the filament wires. What the filament wires do is they first go from the power transformer, there's usually two wires, right? They go to the 
uh, indicator light. I have a pilot light assembly. It looks like this on the inside. So they go first here and then they go to feed the filaments to all of the tubes in the amplifier. Now, because there's no center tap, that means that you have to run a couple of 100 ohm resistors to ground to basically remove noise and ensure that that circuit is, is properly grounded. I've actually drawn this up just with a, a Sharpie marker just to show you what I'm talking about. Power transformer, you have the uh, two wires going to the heaters and then uh, and also the pilot light and then these 100 ohm resistors in parallel are supposed to go to ground. Now, when I opened up the amp, these two resistors had been removed. Uh, I could see the solder, um, little solder pads where they used to be, but I don't know what would possess somebody to remove those. That was a huge source of hum in this amplifier. So that has been restored. Basically, look at the schematic, put it right back to exactly what it's supposed to be according to the schematic. Noise is gone. The next thing I found, and this again was somebody's handiwork um, inside this amplifier, was um, in the bias circuit, there's a couple of, uh, on the schematic, there are 80, or what was originally in there at least, was 80 microfarad uh, at 75 volt capacitors for the biasing in the amplifier. There's also a bias pot in there. But anyway, one of those, what should have been an 80 microfarad capacitor, had been replaced with this old Mallory, um, which is the correct voltage, 75 volts, but is a 500 microfarad capacitor. So just in the stratosphere, uh, compared to what the stock value should have been. Uh, so basically, I rewired the bias circuit. I rebiased the amp. And uh, it's sounding much better, sounding the way it should. Uh, the third thing, I mean, just the third of many things, but probably the last thing I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about here in the video is these white Mallory, these are the bypass capacitors. There's uh, six of them throughout the, the circuit that um, are, are attached to the cathodes of the, um, of the, um, the, uh, the, the nine pin, either 12 AT7 or 12 AX7 uh, preamp tubes, uh, the tremolo tube, the reverb, the phase inverter, so on. And uh, these capacitors had all drifted way off spec. They're supposed to be 25 microfarad at 25 volt. Uh, I was getting readings like 40 microfarad, so way, way, way beyond tolerance. So they've all been replaced with new Sprague uh, electrolytic capacitors. There's a bunch of other things. There were some dirty solder joints, somebody in there monkeying around with a, with a, uh, a, a, a soldering iron that's not been properly cleaned. So I had to get out the solder wick. Um, remove a whole bunch of excess solder, resolder things, essentially just a lot of cleanup. Um, there were some other things that the safety ground for the, uh, for the three prong cord uh, had a cold solder joint, so it was not properly, the chassis of this amp was not even properly grounded. Um, so I fixed that. Just a lot of like TLC general kind of stuff to put this amp back to the way that it should be. So it's got a clean built bill of health now. I think you heard it sounding pretty good. Ready to go back home. A um, couple of other things I'll mention. This amplifier has a uh, master volume. That was first added to the twin in 1972. The old blackface twins did not have a master volume. You would just control the volume using um, either of the, of the channel volumes. Uh, I'm not really a huge fan of master volumes in, in any, I can't think of a Fender amp where I, I find a, you know, a really useful uh, master volume. So when I was playing at the beginning, I just had the master volume on 10, which essentially just, just puts the, the, the resistance for that, for that potentiometer at a minimum. It's kind of the next best thing to just taking it out of the circuit. And I just control the volume using the, the channel volume. That's just a personal preference of mine. Um, and the other thing is it has the original 12 inch Oxford uh, 12T6 speakers. Uh, they're coated on the speakers. I pulled off the, um, the, uh, the grill cloth frame. Speakers are absolutely fine. So it's nice to see that we can keep the original speakers in there. Um, I've actually replaced the power tubes with a set of JJ power tubes. 
Um, the original ones, or, or I don't know if they're original, but whatever, whatever was in there, there was a couple of Westinghouse and a couple of uh, old Sylvania tubes um, that uh, were functioning, but a little bit crackly, kind of on their last legs. Um, as I mentioned, the biasing of this amp was all messed up, so that's really not good for the power tubes. So I've put in a new set of JJ's um, that are just going to make this amp run uh, a lot cleaner. So that's about it. There you have it. Um, if you're uh, interested in other amps that I've worked on, other projects, I build amps, I'm repairing amps constantly here in the shop, go to my YouTube channel, PTW Amps, hit subscribe. Uh, if you want to contact me or find out more, find me on Facebook, PTW Amps uh, on Facebook, and I uh, would love to hear from you. So in the meantime, thanks for watching.